welcome to another episode of Talking Politics here at the Hindu with me Nistula Hedpar where we unpack the news making the headlines in domestic politics. This week we will talk about who I call the Scarlet Pimpernel of Indian politics, Prashant Kishore, the poll strategist, and the talk surrounding him joining India's oldest political party, the Indian National Congress. On May 2nd last year, after the results of the West Bengal polls, Mr. Kishore had declared that he was leaving the electoral consultant space and was seeking an active political career. Around eight months ago, we had done a similar episode featuring Mr. Kishore and the likelihood of his joining the Congress party. That didn't fructify at that time. Last week, however, Mr. Kishore and the Congress party very openly engaged in the recruitment business with him giving presentations, uh, of his plans to revive the Congress party to a team of party seniors and the question of him joining the party publicly was expressed. This episode therefore will be on what kind of suggestions uh, he made for the Congress party's revival, which, what are the suggestions on the table and what are the negotiations looking like for his joining the party if at all. This was a week of presentations by Prashant Kishore, formerly of the IPAC, for his plan for the electoral revival of the Congress. The background was the drubbing that the Congress got in the assembly polls in the five states of Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Goa, uh, Manipur and Punjab. In Punjab, the Congress could not defend uh, its government in the state and in the other four states, the BJP registered a full victory in the states where Congress felt that it had a chance against the incumbent government of the BJP, that is uh, Manipur, and uh, uh, Uttarakhand and Goa, the party came a cropper. It was preceded by a lot of talk of the Gujarat unit of the Congress, which had been watching uh, the way these elections had panned out and where assembly polls are due later in the year, telling the high command that they wanted Mr. Kishore to take on the Congress's account for the state. Within the Congress itself, the drubbing that the party got gave a fillip to the ginger group of the G23 or certain leaders within the party who had been for some time asking for reforms within the Congress in the party structure and the decision on the leadership position. Uh, since Congress President Sonia Gandhi is currently only the interim president, she had taken over when then Congress President Rahul Gandhi, who's YNR MP, uh, resigned from his position, taking responsibility for the 2019 poll debacle and the uh, status quo has prevailed since. The resolution of some of these existential issues facing the Congress, naming the shrink, namely the shrinking support base of the party and its place as a national party, has also been weighing quite heavily on the Congress party. Any discussion about the Congress is always around these issues. So, uh, let's just uh, cut to the chase and find out what was in the presentations uh, made by Prashant Kishore to a team of Congress seniors, uh, his game plan or his roadmap, so to speak, for the revival of the Grand Old Party of India. Well, the Hindu has access to a slight presentation made in around about January 2022. Uh, we repeat, we do not have the presentation that was made to the Congress leaders in the last week or so. It is one of several sources in the Congress say that was shared with the Gandhis in the run-up to the last week. It is an authentic presentation, but certainly not the one that was made last week. This one has 88 slides and not the 600 that were claimed to have been shown uh, over the four days last week. And it gives uh, uh, some sort of an idea on the nature of the prescriptions for the Congress that was made by Mr. Kishore. Uh, you can't come up with different presentations for the same topic uh, every month or so. So we are basically looking at the general direction of the prescriptions made by Mr. Kishore. Well, Noting that the Congress had been witnessing a steady decline since 1985, both in terms of vote share and looks of her seats, one slide of Mr. Kishore's presentation draws on the six symbols of Nataraja, the dancing form of Lord Shiva, and calls for the reincarnation of the Congress. More specifically, Mr. Kishore's presentation pointed out that a non-Gandhi as the party president and Mrs. Sonia Gandhi as the head of a Congress-led alliance like the UPA would have made high impact, but the viability of such a position, with the Congress being the way it is, organizationally makes it a difficult proposition. The preferred option, therefore, 
which was presented, is of Mrs. Gandhi continuing as the leader of the party with a non-Gandhi working president. It recommends a revival of the parliamentary board of the Congress with Rahul Gandhi, former party chief, heading it. And it suggests that current General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi Vadra uh, be General Secretary in charge of coordination of all these bodies. And uh, another specific kind of prescription that was made and has come out in bits and drabs in uh, reports in the news media over the last few months has been to concentrate the Congress's electoral firepower in 358 seats across 17 states. Most of it is basically states where the Congress is in direct contest with the BJP, namely Gujarat, uh, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and states like that, in Uttarakhand, etc. 168 seats, uh, seats across five states uh, have to be fought with regional parties, with 17 seats in the northeastern states, again, with regional partners. So this is the kind of an overview that uh, uh, Prashant Kishore gave going into data. The, uh, the slide presentation is quite data rich and it's an extremely interesting document uh, to go through uh, for a political journalist or for anybody interested in electoral politics in India. Uh, he also talks about targeting 30 crore voters out of an electorate of 104 crores and a brand new architecture of electoral management with an election task force advising the Congress president. There was also a suggestion that a completely new communications architecture be created to create a surround sound of the party's campaign across multiple platforms. Now, if you think that you've heard this before, it has bits and pieces of a lot of the campaigns that Mr. Kishore has run successfully for other political parties, the JDU in Bihar in 2015, uh, for YSR, uh, YSRCP in 2019, uh, for the DMK uh, in the recently concluded polls in 2021, and so on and so forth. The presentation to the Congress party leaders uh, formed as a team uh, by uh, party president Sonia Gandhi. This included senior leaders and former uh, union ministers such as A.K. Antony, Ambika Soni, uh, P. Chidambaram, uh, Malikarjun Kharge, Jairam Ramesh, and party leaders such as K.C. Venugopal, Randeep Surjewala, and that quintessential Congress organizational man, Mukul Vasnik. They have gone through uh, this presentation. A report has been prepared. There is some confusion over whether at the time of recording this video that has been submitted to the High Command or not. Now, what will happen after this report has been done? Now, uh, Mr. Kishore will be negotiating his particular space within the Congress with the Gandhis. The team of leaders who went through the report basically are just going to give their opinion on uh, whether these suggestions should be taken on board and a yes or no answer whether Mr. Prashant Kishore should be included in the party. What that space is going to be and what that decision is going to be will be decided between Mr. Kishore himself and the Gandhi family. So uh, whether he will join the party formally and in what form that joining will take place. Will he become General Secretary for Strategy or Advisor to Congress President? Uh, this fairly open process of presentation. Now, normally what happens when you get people on board, negotiations are uh, pretty hush hush and they go on behind the scene. And only when everything has been sorted out, uh, does a, a formal sort of joining happen uh, in the party fold, you're given the party uh, ticket, uh, uh, the admission ticket, uh, everybody has to pay a nominal sum and then you know, you're welcomed into the party by senior leaders and you say, um, you address a press conference, give your reasons for why you have joined the party, etc. This has been a very different process, whether or not Mr. Uh, Kishore ends up joining. Here, very openly, a committee was formed and over the last four or five days, presentations have been made. There were pictures of leaders coming in and out of Mr. Kishore himself being seen at the AICC. Why has this happened so openly? I did put a question uh, like this to both the Congress and Mr. Kishore's team as to how this kind of very open process of recruitment, very unusual for the political scene, seems to be happening. Well, uh, according to sources in both the Congress and Mr. Kishore's camp, uh, this is because uh, of a bit of a trust deficit that has emerged after the polls in 2017. 
with Mr. Kishore handling the campaign for the Congress in UP, Punjab and Uttarakhand. Uh, it was always felt by sources in the Kishore uh, camp that he was not given enough credit uh, for uh, winning Punjab for the party and was given all the blame for the party not winning in Uttarakhand and uh, Uttar Pradesh and also a way for the Congress to get clarity According to Mr. Kishore's camp, the Congress should have clarity on what they will be signing on if they decide to go with his plan because uh, he doesn't want anybody else turning around and saying, look, you never told us that we would have to make these kind of changes in the party structure, etc. So basically, the presentation is a way of saying that, look, this is what you'll have to do if you want uh, my plan to work. All of this is what I suggest and this should be done. And also, it is also a way where Mr. Kishore could be accountable, should be accountable for uh, whether or not his plan works. So all of this seems to be uh, done uh, out in the open for this, these very reasons. Well, in a party of long standing and with a complicated organizational architecture like the Congress, will such an arrangement gel in an organic manner? This is a question that is also haunting a lot of congressmen. They are uh, many of them, of course, with entrenched interests and uh, apprehensions are a little bit wary of where their space would be if Mr. Kishore comes uh, at a very important position in the party hierarchy. Will they be uh, uh, referred to for any decisions being taken? Will they be deferred to in terms of anything being done in their area of operation? The Congress uh, leadership style has been a mix of high command and competing pressure groups within the party and with the Gandhi family playing adjudicator. Well, recent electoral reverses have meant that the Gandhi family authority may run, but it needs to be validated pretty soon with an electoral victory. You have Gujarat and you have Himachal coming up pretty soon. And then you have in 2023 elections in Karnataka, again, extremely important and in Telangana. Uh, these are all very important states as far as Congress is concerned. In the, in the past, you see, poll consultants would be roped in for survey work. Um, advertising campaigns and messaging, etc. It was only after Mr. Kishore's entry into the field that, you know, screening of for tickets and choice of candidates and obviously messaging, what are the um, campaign stuff to be done, how many people should be put uh, at each booth, etc. All of this uh, was designed by him. Therefore, and this is my concluding bit for uh, this episode of Talking Politics, Whichever way the wind blows, with India's oldest political party also considering Mr. Kishore's proposal and willing to take him on board as a part of its organizational hierarchy, at least he can lay claim to having altered the electoral scape of the country forever. This is all I have for you this week. Thank you for joining us.